Hi everyone, thank you all very much for joining me today. My name is Professor Hermanson. I am an assistant professor in the English department at Westfield State University in Westfield, Mass. This is the first video in a series of videos designed to help those of you who are pursuing teacher licensure to teach English in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. However, these videos might also be useful for you if you are taking the MTEL exams at all because you are required to take one exam no matter what your content area is, and that is the Common Literacy exam, which is short for Communication and Literacy Skills. Everyone is required to take that no matter what you hope to teach. So I hope that these videos will be beneficial to those of y'all who are future English teachers and just to future teachers in general who are going to need to take the communication and literacy skills exam. So MTEL stands for the Massachusetts Tests for Educator Licensure. So I'll tell y'all a little bit more about the nuts and bolts of the exam, how much it costs, how you register, where your scores go at the end of this video, but I wanna start by talking to you about common literacy and what to be prepared for in the next video in this sequence, which is going to prepare you for that specific exam. So all MTEL exams are administered as computer-based tests or CBTs. So this means that you will go to a testing site and take the exam exclusively on a computer. So I'm going to give you guys some skills for tackling a, com a computer-based test, excuse me, um, and give you all the strategies that you'll need to be successful, even if standardized tests are not your cup of tea. So the communication and literacy skills test includes two subtests. You have to take and pass both. Now you can split them up so that you are taking one uh, in one session and the other in a different session. But I'll talk to you about how that won't be the most cost effective approach to taking this particular exam. So the two subtests are reading and writing. So the reading exam, again, is computer-based and it's 42 multiple choice questions. If those kinds of questions and standardized tests in general freak you out, I understand. However, being successful on this test is not only preparing yourself for the content that you might face on these tests, but also for how these tests structure their questions. The good news is all standardized tests, the MTEL included, are very predictable. They are not trying to trick you or trap you, generally with some exceptions, um, and they do follow similar patterns. There are similar question types, there are similar areas of content knowledge that they're testing, and the material appears in predictable ways. So succeeding on the MTEL is being prepared for the patterns that you're going to see on the test, right? Okay. So 42 multiple choice questions for reading, 35 multiple choice questions in the writing subtest, and seven short answer sentence correction items. Those of y'all who are terrified of grammar uh, or sentence correction in general, I understand, but I'm gonna help prepare you for that so that you're going into the test with open eyes and you're ready to tackle any questions you might see. Also included on the writing subtest are two open response assignments. So that's where you're going to respond in sort of a short essay format to a particular prompt. I'm gonna to talk to you about those two. You get a total of four hours and 15 minutes in your entire appointment when you go to take the exam. 15 minutes of that is doing the tutorial. That's where they explain to you how to take the computer-based tests. And then the other four hours are the testing time. If you decide to split up when you take the reading and writing exam, because you can do that, um, then you'll be given two hours for each section. I told you that it is not cost effective to take them separately, and here's why. If you take them together on the same day, you will pay $112 to take them. If you split them up, the writing exam costs $85 and the reading exam takes 76, costs 76. I am an English professor, not a math professor, but I added them up and found that that is $161 if you do it separately. And by my math, that's about a $50 difference. Um, so you will be saving yourself money and in my opinion, stress um, and mental anguish if you just get them done in one go. So I would advise you not to take the bait when it comes to, oh, I'll just take them separately and take a smaller test. You are just adding to the list of things that you have to do and you're making an already expensive, annoying test 
more expensive and more annoying. So I would advise against that, right? Um, okay, so the qualifying score on the exams is a 240 on each subject. I'm gonna talk to you in future videos um, about the scoring, but by my approach, that should not be in your mind. You should not be worried about hitting any particular score threshold. Of course, you want to pass the MTEL, um, but I am going to teach you how to eliminate wrong answers, how even if you're not absolutely certain of the answer of a particular question, you can give yourself a really good shot of getting that question correctly just by eliminating the very predictable types of wrong answers that you are likely to see on the exam. I'll give you one little teaser just to prepare you for what's to come. So I mentioned sentence correction, right? Um, so you will have a section of the test where you have to identify the errors or there might not be errors in a sentence. So this is going to test your knowledge of grammar, punctuation, the sort of conventions of standard written English, right? So I have seen something come up on several tests where one of the options, you know that there's a, a lot of confusion about this particular punctuation question, when to use its I-T-S without an apostrophe, and I-T apostrophe S. This causes students lots and lots of headaches. I will talk to you in future videos about how to tackle that question. If you want a little spoiler, it apostrophe S is always it is, right? Um, and the other one is possessive. We'll get to that later. But on several exams that I've seen, several sample tests, and older tests, they've asked about this construction. They offer this as a possible right answer to a sentence correction question, I-T-S apostrophe. This is never acceptable in English usage ever. You never see this. So if you happen to see this, you can go ahead and eliminate it as a right answer, answer option. And if you are looking at a multiple choice test with four possible answers and you get rid of one, you have gone from having a 25% chance of answering that question correctly to a 33.33333% chance of answering that question correctly. Again, I am not a math major, but my sources tell me that that gives you a much better chance of getting that question correct. So this is just a general overview of what we're going to be tackling in future videos. Those are going to be test taking strategies. Um, those are going to be the content knowledge that you can study. I'm gonna introduce you all to some of the resources that I'm making available to you in a Dropbox folder um, and a little bit of information about the nuts and bolts of the test. Um, so thank you very much for watching. I will get back to you quickly with a second video. And if you have any questions, please do send me an email at profhermanson at gmail.com. Thank you guys.